How you doing, folks? Episode two of the Good Crack Podcast with Welcome Matthew Ferrari back. and Joey DeFilippis. Welcome back. How you doing, dude? Good, man. I'm excited to be back. Like, boy, oh, 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 podcast, yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. I'm a comedian. How yeah, you fucking doing? Yeah, I mean, listen, folks. It's been it's been a hell of a fucking week. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you yeah. know when you hear stories about like, you know, Leo DiCaprio did the Titanic, and the next weekend he couldn't go out for a breakfast cereal. <laughs> I, it's just like that. Like I woke up on uh, Monday morning. And I was driving down the street, and this crackhead came up to me and said, Hey, aren't you that guy from that cereal commercial? And I said, Yeah, well, it's a podcast, but all right, thanks, man. Yeah. And I'm like, Wow, I got recognized. And he goes, All right, see you later, Brand Flakes. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, listen, we were saying last week uh, how we really wanted to start making it out to these board meetings in town. They're getting really contentious, they're getting very amped up. And, folks, what a fucking. We fucked, we fucked up. up. So we bad. chose the worst week not to go. We literally were just talking shite last week. I think it was one of our best bits about like what it would be like if we went to a contentious board meeting. That and, one, and and mind you, the, the subject matter was totally they totally were they were different. talking about the school curriculum for this upcoming year. Yeah. But and um, this week at the Wayne Board of Ed meeting, New Jersey, it's all over the news. It's gotten some yep. national attention. It has. It has. There was a very contentious meeting at the Board of Ed. About masks, listen, I don't give a fuck about the content of the meeting. I care about the contentiousness of the meeting. Yeah, And how yeah. me and Joey could exist in that space as right, artists. Right, right. So tell them what happened. I mean, hey, I don't got to tell you nothing. We got a, we got a special treat we for you guys. We got a fucking guys. CBS News special. We're going to get this going over here. Is this like Freedom of Information Act? Like we're allowed to show I, I think so, but hey, episode two. Let's take yeah, a listen, shot in the dark. I fuck want it. fucking Joey. Who, who owns CBS? Tell them to come after me. And tell Popeyes to sponsor us. They open with Bittersweet Symphony. Are the folks able to see this? Yeah, it's, it's up. This is news, folks. school board meetings have turned into confrontations between opponents and supporters of the move. A recent CBS News poll found this. Only 6% of parents say that mask mandates should not be allowed, while 58% say they should absolutely be required. Who, who did these fucking surveys? Johnny but surveys? How, uh, why don't I get that job? Why don't I get to do the surveys? Pay me to do a fucking. Well, the thing survey. with surveys is like they could have mustered that up like two days before the the thing. There's and a good. I have a good reason to believe that statistics aren't real ever. There's no such thing as a real statistic. No matter. Hot no matter take, what folks. It's for. Listen, yeah. you can quote me on that one, but don't do it in federal court. But I'm just gonna say, what what are statistics and where do they come from? Listen, I ain't too good with numbers. I don't know nothing about nothing, but I can tell you this much. But hey, statistics it's more like it's the fuck you, it's the guts. We're about to turn it up a notch. Yeah. Recently announced a mass mandate for all schools, and employees were told to get vaccinated or face COVID tests. Meg Oliver went to one ten school board meeting in I interviewed that guy in high school. Okay, what does this have to do with USA, folks? And once again, me and Joey have no dog. In I this take fight. that bus to New York. I'll take that back later. All right, let's pause that right here. <laughs> let's just do it right off the bat. I saw another video with a similar thing today. And listen, I hate to be talking so contentiously because it's happening in my town. And I don't mean to step on any toes. Right. But this is a national, the real national pandemic is this, folks. You and your mother and your grandmother and your father and your grandfather and your brother and your sister don't know fucking shit about science you were educated in the public school system where the only thing you were taught was how semen worked in biology and you're a fucking idiot you went to a, uh, a state school you got your bachelor's degree in marketing or something and you don't use that today and you know nothing about virology you know nothing about medicine you know nothing about science and nothing about politics on yeah. top of no it. that's apparently all you fucking know about because yeah. somehow you're like this is all about science and science is not real shut the fuck up everyone needs to shut their fucking mouths none of you are educated at all you read a fucking twitter article and now you think you're fucking uh you know the fucking uh, albert einstein he's got a point shut your fucking mouth 
Stick to what you know. Everyone, ha- people- fucking getting your nails done, going to the sports bar, watching the Jets, and jerking off. Yep. You fucking. We got. We got to get hobby lobbies going again. People got to start picking up crafts and 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 fucking. What were the cars that you did around the track with yeah, the remote? Fucking, I know what you're fuck, you know what I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. Me go like you hold. We'll make like air blimps or whatever. Yeah, start hopping into that hey, again. Hey guys, listen. If you guys were all educated on science as much as you said you were, we would be fucking in flying cars. Yeah, and living in a utopia. Absolutely. So shut the fuck up. Yeah. Just that's it. End let's keep story. it. Let's keep it going yeah. here. School board meeting in Wayne, New Jersey began. Families against the school mask mandates gathered outside to loudly protest. Why are you guys here tonight? Pause it again. Yeah, I mean, what the fuck? The, well, any, any, I don't know any who I'm mad at here. The parents or like CBS News for like, let's put fucking yeah. kids that are being dragged. They do like the intimate interview. They sit down yeah, on the like, bench. Hey, kids, and it's like I'm, I'm going to get on like, your level. Yeah, like, hey, like, let's, let's talk, guys. What do you think about this? What do you guys think about crack? I like I, it. Imagine he's like, well, I'm really excited to learn about anal when I get to eighth grade. <laughs> it brings it back full circle. <laughs> full circle. I've just learned about something called masturbate in, in Bukaki. No, but but then I realized it's not called masturbating, but it's mask debating. That's what I learned in school, yeah. and that's why I'm here today. I thought it was masturbating, and it was something about spraying mayonnaise from your penis. But no, it's mask no. debating, and you go talk to you know you random go, you adults. You go to board of ed meetings, and you debate masks, and you you fill your life with debating whether you should wear a cloth on your face because that's what's important. Is it worth it to wear a mask if it means your school is going to open? Look at this fucking lady. No, he's like, I'm not complying. Oh, this kid's This great. is good. He's my favorite. I love this kid to death. I don't know why he's not opening his teeth, his jaw. Maybe he's nervous. What are you talking about, son? Why is the, dude? So now, why are uh, newscasters walking around questioning? That's a really. T- he said that's a really tough question. Which is like, listen, that kid's he, mature and understands the nuances. Right, but of he came, he came in hot. He's got the my body, my choice. He's like, it's my choice. And they're like, well, listen, would you wear a mask and go back to school if that was the thing? And he's like, I think, I, yeah, I think I would wear the mask and go to school. I, I want them to go to another kid and be like, do you ever think? About when you dream that a mask and do it and you wear the mask and do it back to that. But Listen, then you want to stay home anyway? <laughs> the real issue here is why are children being brought to rallies in the middle of town about yeah. such a stupid fucking topic? And that goes for anything in anything. life. Anything. You bring a kid and give don't them a sign. Don't bring kids to things. Yeah, folks. just don't. Let them, have, let them live. They, they want to be watching Blues Clues. They don't give a fuck about your. I used, to, I used to think George Bush was like a cool guy growing up, and then I realized he murdered tons of people yeah, and dude, like orchestrated crazy dude, shit. Keep us out of it until right. we're ready. You know what I'm right. saying? And then also, why is this newswoman walking around and asking them hard hitting questions about the, yeah. the local politics of <laughs> the school board? Like, <laughs> le- that kid doesn't even know what fucking year it is. Like, yeah. everyone relax. But this kid handled it very maturely. I will give it to no, him. No, I do, I do. If I, I was there, I would just be like, hey, hey you well, fuck it, though. Well, I said to you like 20 minutes ago, I'm like, he was the only like reasonable one out of if everyone. me and Joey were there in sixth grade, we'd get on the news and just grab the mic and be like, dicks. <laughs> Cock. This is where it, the music. Check this shit out. The majority of the nearly 100 people at this school board meeting were there can we get a pause on this? 100 people at this school board meeting. For them, this has got to be like the fucking Super Bowl. They probably haven't seen numbers like that since oh, fucking yeah. every, every, the Kennedy assassination. Every week, the husband's like, honey, cancel Benzies for Thursday night. We're going to the hey, board meeting. And the fucking Novelli restaurant. We're going to the fucking cancel board Cancel the reservation meeting. at Novelli's. We're going to the fucking board meeting. I honey, got some things to say. Honey, honey, where the fuck is my Uncle Sam hat? <laughs> Honey, where the fuck, where are my star-spangled pants? Hey, we got Zorbas in 20 minutes, hon. No. No, fuck, fuck that. that. We ain't going Get to in Zorbas. the car. They could leave the fucking food on the front step. I already paid for it. We're going to the fucking board meeting. Hey. They should have got Rex Kwon Do involved with this. Imagine him coming up. Oh, my up. God. Hey, listen. I don't care about masks. I care about America and freedom. And if they we're going to do one thing first, it's not put masks on our kids. But we're going to teach them. But the point Rex is, I, Kwando. I'm just shocked that 100 people, 100 yeah. adult people are showing up to these meetings. Listen, guys, there's so much other things you could like. 
There's just such, you know, there's sunsets. There's, you know, sun rises. It's soup, just go, go, go volunteer at a soup kitchen. Yeah, go to a soup kitchen. Go read a book. Um, what else could you do with your time? Anything. I think. Who am I? I'm just Johnny. Come lately. C U M. There we go. Science Keyword. Science. There you go. She hasn't. She hasn't challenged anything in life up until this point. Guys, that's a direct quote. First off, you, you notice a trend here. They're all using the word science an awful lot. I would really love to see their credentials and just verify if any of them are clinical biologists. Yeah. The other thing I want to know is, um, what is a statement like that? Science is meant to be challenged. You're absolutely right. Science is meant to be challenged like 500 years ago when we thought that the Earth was the center of the galaxy and not the f- uh, fucking sun. But we, I, I think 2021, we have a pretty good grip of what's going on. I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. We we do shoot people into space now, so who fucking knows? Stop but, the maskness. Uh, continue. Let's hear the rest of this. Like amongst children. That's what this is about, folks. They want applause. These are a bunch of fuckface. They want to go, hey, listen, this is what I think. The lady is either in denial or she's just lying. Ooh. Because every news Excuse me, I'm speaking. You're a liar. For like most of these women, like most of these women, I I'm gonna go off and make an assumption here. Go most ahead. of them, it's most a hot of them, take. it's a bold one. I know you. Most say. of them are housewives. Most of them probably just sit around, take care of the kids, whatever. Which like, is wrong. We don't agree with that. Modern yeah. woman should be get able to jobs, do that. get jobs. Yes. But what we're what I'm saying here is, it seems like for a lot of these ladies, there it's there's not much eventfulness in life. Yeah. You know, the ki- they all leave, live for their kids. This their is kids the are everything. Daytona 500. They fans. finally have something. Most of these women, they just want to go and rally some people up. Yeah. This is them. They want to get the troops together. Their stupid bitch friends at a a (laughs) coffee shop or diner on a Saturday morning. But now they're like they hold they uh, they hold court and talk about the problems of the world. They got uh, it all figured out. Moms of moms of Wayne Facebook group. Them just be like, what the fuck is going on here? It's them. They're like, wait a second. I could do this in front of a hundred people and get on TV to complain and make myself feel worthy again, and that my life hasn't become a meaningless pit of despair that I know one day (laughs) will just. Collapse as my parents and people As my children leave me And I die slowly alone Is that what it is folks? Maybe there's a thing where like You know when you're home alone a little bit And you realize Oh nothing's happening here That you need to go out And you're like, scream a little bit You're like listen I was gonna stay home And watch some reruns Of Real Housewives Of The Bachelor But I could Listen the Board of Ed Is a seven minute drive Listen I love I could get home in time to still watch the episode. I can, I can still watch it, The Bachelor know? in Paradise and then catch myself on the nightly news right after and get screaming fucking, my fucking And get head loaded off. while the kids are screaming that they don't want to go to bed. Do you guys think these girls, or just all these people, hammer a bottle of white wine to the face before or after these meetings? I think they rip half before and then they do a bottle and a half. No, after. I would actually bet that after, a couple of them they pre they they probably um, pregame in a parking lot like a tailgate. yeah. But then tailgate but then you got to think about it this. Meeting. You got to think about it like this. All these people they leave on a high horse thinking, wow, we just really did. We did we some stuck it to the man. We did work. We did good work tonight. So they probably go out and get loaded afterwards. They go to Maggie's. But you know what? The more they get, get used ripped. to it and start enjoying it. You know that they're going to start showing up a little bit early, and the dad's going to pull the grill out of the trunk and be like, hey, Tim, come a little bit early. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm frying up some dogs. You're going you know, to think it's like, a, sangria. You're gonna think it's like a high school football game. Yeah, you're going to be driving down Valley Road, and you're like, well, I wonder what they're tailgating for on Thursday night. And then it's like, um, board of ed meeting. And then soon we're going to have like the militarized police out front <laughs> for everything, <laughs> shooting rubber bullets. Yeah, I can't wait. And tear gas. I'm sure the parents of the lane would really handle that well. And then you get this guy, and comes Smith in, parent. comes in double masks. He's just got like strings all over him, like he looks like a moron too. It's funny. Listen, once again, me and Joey are not on either side of this. I didn't, uh, yeah, mask or green. No, yeah, both. This is this is absurdity on both both sides. Yeah, it's so funny because these people, truthfully, and I, you might think I'm wrong, they do not give a fuck about this at all. Nah, they don't care. In the slightest, they want to get up in front of a room and scream at people. That's what it's about. I'm telling <laughs> and, you, and get like those like applause. Yeah, yeah. You go, Cheryl. You got him, honey. Hey, 
go fucking do it, Andy. Tell them what's going on. My kids and then have been the, going to school in this town for 40 years, sir. That's not possible. And then the opposers. They don't need masks. And then, and then when the opposers get up. Sit the fuck down. Fuck you, Andy. I'll see you next week at the barbecue, you fucking piece of shit. Yeah, you should take care of your lawn the way you're taking care of your politics. Oh, dude, that's what well, you'll see later on in the video. They pull some shit like that. This is We're living in post-apocalyptia, people. Yeah, we, we all died years ago. Yeah, I support anyone who wants to wear a mask. That is their choice to do so. She wrote something, folks. She wrote it on her iPhone 12. And then this lady comes back in. How do you feel about this? This poor Wayne Township board. Catherine, of Catherine's just taking all the heat. Catherine Kazan, you seem like a nice lady. I do not envy the position that you're in right now in this time of the world. How f are we gonna go far into this one? Or no, we gotta just over we gotta go. Thing. We, yeah, know, we gotta go to when the guy interrupts. Yeah, yeah. So this is a woman that was in so that she's, meeting. Yeah, and she's like she's like one of the anti-maskers, and like they're like they're trying to get her opinion. Yeah. And there's a guy this playing is a local park with. He's her playing with his kid in the background, and he just like starts interjecting like that's. Like right there, like there how how could you blanketly say there's no studies being done? Like, who, wh how do you know that? I just I'm hey, curious. Not this fall. Here it comes. No, it's a little bit farther along. Actually, it's near the, the end. Of COVID. If they're worn properly, they can. The kids aren't wearing them properly, and that's also my big concern. They're but not. if they do wear them properly, would you consider sending your kids to school with a mask? That's like um, saying, like, if they teach my no, kid how to do math properly, I just think then that I would support math. My daughter went through it last year. It took a mental toll. I think it's hard for these kids to learn how to read, learn how to... They put masks in front of their eyes. How could they read? mouths are covered by the mask, and their peers' masks. It's a little dehumanizing. A lot of people will argue that you're part of a community and being part of a community. QAnon. You, know, you want to protect <laughs> others by masking and vaccinating. What's your response to that? Um, I agree with that, but the only thing to counter is these people that don't feel safe, you know, they're still going out food shopping. They're still going out to concerts. They're going to, they're still going to the mall. They're still going to the beach. If they were that terrified, I feel that if they felt that threatened, I feel that they would be staying home. And I don't think that everyone collectively needs to be punished for that. Why would you stay home when you can go to a board of ed meeting? During our interview, a local parent who supports... <laughs> Guys, this is the apocalypse. Look at him. Do you feel... She's trying to get grandma killed. He tells, Guys, he tells his kid. This kid is telling his small child that's running around on a playground she's trying to get grandma killed. What the fuck? fuck is going on guys oh those are neighbors whatever happened to, hey betty i'm bringing over a blueberry pie you're gonna enjoy it give Wait. some to the kids betty i don't like uh your politics but uh here's a blueberry here's a pie. blueberry pie fucking eat it you'll love it howdy neighbor Hey, I like your lawn. Why don't we get together sometimes and have the husbands drink themselves stupid and the well, wives could pretend to like each other you know folks people guess who it is again Third Horn Investments. Joey, I'm just like, listen, I, I was not typically in the business world, right? I was an arts guy. I was wasting my time watching movies and reading books and enlightening my yeah. mind. Spending money on degrees that are <sighs> worth a lot of money. Spending money on coffee from Starbucks just because I liked how it made me look Yep. when I was writing my novel. Yep. Coming out soon. Um, Third Horn Investments, they're doing things that are unheard of, folks. When I This is why I'm in the business world now because I'm excited. I'm truthfully... I'm jazzed about Third Horn Investments. You might start a business. You might start a business, or you might be part of something bigger than yourself for once, folks. They're investing in technologies that have been hither unto un unchecked. This is crazy stuff. Tell them about the new thing they're doing. Listen, Third Horn Investments is breaking ground. They're a cutting-edge investment firm. They're doing some of the greatest work out there right now. Shout out to Jim Bloom, founder and uh, Jim. CEO. Jim's a big fan of the podcast. Big too. fan. Not too often that one of your sponsors is also a fan and a listener. Right. And that's right. really a touching thing to have. And most of the time, these sponsors, as you saw, like the Wallet Wallet, you, they're giving us scripts. They're telling us how to read it. Jim calls us up. He says, hey, man, listen, you're straight shooters. I love what you're doing. I want you to go out there, and I want you to sell this product from the bottom of your heart. Just tell them how you feel. Tell them how you feel. And you know what? I'll tell you how I feel. 
How's your portfolio looking? Guys, my portfolio, and I know me and Joey have different ones because we're interested in different things, and that's what Third Horn will do for right. you. My portfolio is really interesting because it's all about new tech. And what Third Horn is investing in right now is this new product that allows you to be kidnapped in your sleep. And what this company does is they put, they rig your body up with VR technology while you're sleeping at an unknown time. You know it's coming, but you don't know when. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you make a time, you schedule it, but... So then when you wake yeah, up, no you're, you're on another planet. You could be in Ibiza. You could be in Italy. You could be wherever. And the fact is... You're not anywhere. You're in your home and, you know, strapped up into VR and a comatose You're in your spaces. living room. And you're s saving so much money on a vacation when you could actually be going to Italy. You could actually be wasting money on flights when you wake up and you have no discernible difference of where you actually are because the virtual reality is that good. Yep. That's what my portfolio is looking at. And that's going to be a, a venture that pays itself off tenfold within the next 10 years. What about you, Joe? My portfolio actually is down 60%. However, it's a blessing in disguise because when you're working with a, a team of highly motivated clients, investors, and just business guys, I mean, Jim Bloom is the best at this. For me, I'm not really investing in a stock per se. I'm not really investing in an asset. And why would you need to? It's 2021. Yeah, I'm investing in the idea that this guy, Jim Bloom, is going to take finance. He's going to take you know, commercial real estate investing, angel investing, all of that, he's going to take it to the moon, to the next level. And that's all that matters. Yeah. And and now he's starting to break into the crypto world. They're going to be making horn coin and they're going to be, um, you know, debuting that on market on the Binance Smart Chain. And we're really excited about that. We're, we're going to be hyping that up. I think we all up. really are because not too often do you get to get into a crypto market at an early stage. And I'm not buying right. one coin. I'm not buying two coins. I'm not buying three coins. I'm buying... Yeah, I mean, I'm listen, buy them. I want gonna, 5 million shares. I want, I'm going to buy them. Why wouldn't I? You know what I mean? It's good business. It's and you know what? Out. Guess what? Goes to the economy. Goes to the economy. Benefits everybody. Hurts nobody. I wrote the bill. I wrote the bill on the environment. So yeah, Third Horn Third Investments, Horn investments yeah. folks. Check them out. www.thirdhorninvestments.com slash crack. And you can use code, oh no, Jimmy Bloom's been caught with rock again. And you know what? Tell Jim Bloom that the good crack boys sent you. Yeah, we sent you. And hey, they're going to match your investment up to $50,000. So put that money in. Third Horn Investments, folks. The first name in investments. You know, people, those were the days. People, pe listen, nothing's going to save anyone with this. This is this is going to keep going on. As, as long as people get airtime, this is going to keep going on. Uh, you know, Superman isn't fixing it. Spider-Man, new Spider-Man trailer. Did you guys see the new Spider-Man trailer yeah, this week? Yeah, people are the loving that. The highest viewed trailer of all time. I don't know about Doc, you, but I'm Doc fucking Ock, hyped. Doc Ock comes in at he's the end. Back. And he's like, hey, Peter. Hello, Peter. Or he's like, hey, Peter. <laughs> Peter, just Swanson, Peter. You know what? I love the superhero movies. I love the Marvel movies. I'm a fan. But yeah, the one fun. thing that annoys me, you know, we're filmmakers, Joey and I, so I've been thinking about this for quite some time. Why is it there like an Italian-American superhero from New Jersey that's like, maybe he's like ex-mob? And his, his powers, he's like, he's fucking invincible because they whacked him, but he survived somehow. Mm -hmm. And he's got a baseball bat that has like... Well, no, he had, he, like, it's like a Spider-Man, he gets bit by a spider. This guy, like, God. he was really hungry and he found like an old, like, so, oh, like he, uh, an old moldy meatball, like, <laughs> in the back of the fridge. And he's like, ah, Ma's not going to be home for a week. What am I going to do? And he took a bite out of the meatball and he was like... Was that like, like a lab? He was at a lab and he's like... There's a fucking fridge that says, like, X on it with, like, a radiation With the cr symbol. skull and crossbones. Yeah, and he opens, and he's like, fucking spaghetti, why not? And then he turns into, like, spaghetti man, and he shoots it out of his butt. Nah, but, like, what about, like, an X-Mob? He shoots it out. Spaghetti. He's just swinging out. He's just shooting spaghetti in his mouth. Like, <laughs> oh, God. No, but I'm saying it would be fine. Like, you know what? It would, like, everyone knows that, like, R-rated superhero movies are way better than the kid ones. Yeah, I think we're yeah, all adults yeah. now. Yeah. What if there was, like, you know, you get the Avengers, right? And Tony Stark is, like making all these crypts like what we're gonna need to do guys is we're gonna fly up to the north tower and we're gonna take out uh we're gonna take out thanos and we're gonna fuck his mother and then <laughs> then like the the italian superhero is just like hey iron man i got a better idea how about you go fuck your mother and everyone's like what like tony his name would be like antonio marciano like Fra francesco spaganzi or some shit. Spagansi. What, what, what would his he, like he would come out he would be. come out like mid like rdj like speech yeah. and be like oh I, listen, I got this, buddy. I, got I know this. you guys think uh, you know how the world works. Listen, the city, the city isn't looking too good. It's not looking too hot. However, I remember at one point 
the Romans, they thought they were going to fall. He and they did. They did. Back to Italy. They did. But they still had some good glory years before, <laughs> till then. So that we're, let's have some glory years. And that would be the whole thing with this character. What would his name be? Like Hitman or something, right? No, no. And he, his whole thing, though. Soprano Man. Soprano Man. His name would just be Tony Soprano, the superhero. And his whole thing would be like, you know, it's the Avengers and like all these characters are like bodying people, but they're only killing the aliens when it comes to like actually brutally murdering a person that's like like an actual terrorist, an evil person. Right. They always like just beat them up or arrest them or they end up killing themselves somehow. But like so our guy would just be like, they'd all be fighting and like, you know, just beating, knocking guys out. And he'd just come out of nowhere and fucking smash someone's skull in and blood would go everywhere. And they're like, dude, like you can't keep killing people. He's like, what the fuck you talking about? What no, do you mean no. I can't kill people? That no, guy's a fucking like, terrorist. He had a gun. They'd be like, it, like it takes the whole whole movie for them to usually take out the villain. And like with this one, like they're trying to be strategic and move <laughs> slow. He just comes out, caps <laughs> the guy, and they're like, <laughs> you're like Tony, him. and he's like, and that's that. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved. What are you guys? You guys gonna fucking do two hours of this shit? And they're like Tony. They're like Tony. We still got like an hour forty. We were supposed to film. like like arrest him or something. Wait, why? He's a fuck. He was gonna kill everyone. Why don't and we the just actor, fucking the whack him? The actor's actually dead too. Like he killed the <laughs> fucking. They're like, dude. Oh, dude, you fucking he killed such him. good lines out of nowhere. Like, it's a kid's movie, and it's like, it's time we save this city. And then he's like, fuck it, this city's a shithole. Why don't we fucking let it burn? And I'm like, right door. And he taps the door, and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, I'm talking, this city's a fucking shithole. Maybe it needs a little restructuring. I don't know, who gives a fuck? You guys want some spaghetti? I want some And, like, they home. say, like, something that could be, like, mistaken is, like, a homosexual innuendo. They're like... Tony, you gotta grab onto his rod and the oh oh he's like a real fucking I'm gonna asshole. I'm, a, I'm not gonna grab this. What do you mean? They're trying to teach him how to be like a modern gentleman because like his whole thing is like he got frozen in ice in the 1940s and he was like Al Capone's friend and he's still learning. He's like the Iron Man, but if Iron Man was like a dirty wop Italian, and then he's just like oh. Mr. Hulk, you know, I know you're big and green and everything, but you fucking stay away from me with that shit. I'll knock you the fuck out, dude. Like, he's not afraid of Hulk. Yeah, yeah, what are you? You're, you're Irish, hey, right? You're fucking Irish. What are you, one of those Irishmen? you're you, Irish. Your power is you ate too many four-leaf clovers or some shit. Is that what Christ. it is? Christ. Hey, hey take this guy's potatoes away. He's going to be useless. He's going to be dying. this little fucking spider kid. He looks like a fucking pussy. You know what I'm saying? What am oh. I doing here? Peter Parker, Pep the Piper, Pickle. <laughs> Shut the fuck Shut up. Shut the fuck Hey, Iron Man. I bet you uh, do yourself a favor and get fucked by a tree, you fucking piece of shit. Wop, they go goomba, fuck, grease ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be our superhero movie. L- hey, listen, if Marvel is listening, um, yeah, yeah, listen. there's our pitch. That's You could give us a studio deal, s- slate us for three motion pictures. We'll, we'll write we'll get it, them we'll done. direct it. I'll play. Uh, me and Joey will both play them. Yeah, that's easy money. Easy, easy money. Hey, Thanos, how about you suck my dick, you fucking pussy? <laughs> hey, Thanos. You forgot this. I got la- something for you. The last ring. <laughs> <laughs> they just like steal scenes from other mob movies. Like it's like he pretends to be on Thanos' side. And he's like, "Yeah, come on, we're gonna get you made, Thanos." And he takes him into an empty room. Is he called Made like, Man? Wow. Oh no! And he gets shot in that. Oh. And that's that. <laughs> oh, oh god, man. that's good crack. Shit, dude. Any like, what would the bat like the bat signal nowadays? Would it be like? Like an app type thing. Like, would it be like, would it be like Gordon is like, hey Batman, I I've sent you five pings on the Bat app. Where where the hell are you? Oh, phone's dead. Phone's you know, dead. You, Sorry, oh, man. I'm Batman. I ain't gotta charge you, dude. Apps have been annoying the fuck out of me lately. Mostly because like, I black out in Belmar every weekend and spend seventy dollars on Wendy's and chicken wings from Wingstop. And I can't afford to be doing that, but because you get it from like Grubhub or something, yeah, dude. Yeah. And it's like something that's Bunch like twelve dollars or somehow thirty dollars actually. Well, dude, fucking uh, uh, dude with sign, you know that guy? He's yeah. always just dude. He fucking does one the other night. He's like a special, like from Grubhub. Use code NYC eats and you can get free dinner from six to ten p.m. I'm sitting there. I'm like, this is great, dude. Around like nine thirty, I'm like, oh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get the free dinner. Code expired. Doesn't work. I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, oh, what kind of false advertising horse shit is this? What kind of sign guy is this fucking guy? Dude with sign, here's a sign, your career is ending. I'm gonna Because fuck you're you. fucking, f- you're, 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 you're folding, fraud. you're folding to big, to big eats. Big business. You're falling to, to big delivery. Yeah, man, it's bullshit. I don't know, even Uber lately has been annoying as fuck. Like, I just feel like after COVID, it's just like either so expensive or so impossible well, to dude, get Well, dude, dude, the, the other night, the other night, I'm in, che- I'm in Chelsea. Now, I got to go from Chelsea to Bed-City. New York, folks. Yeah, we're talking New York City now. 
I'm in Chelsea. I got to go to bed Brooklyn. You know, it's, it's not close by any means. It's definitely a ride. Go on the Uber. I'm like, all right, I guess, you know, I got, I got a bunch of groceries too. I was at like a Trader Joe's and I'm like, fuck, I guess I'll Uber. Like, I don't really feel like doing the commute. I'm just like, I'll just Uber. I'll, I'll eat it. And so the Uber is $56. I'm like, well, not going to eat that. So you know what I did? I said, you know what? I'm going to stick it to big car. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm going to take a cab. I'm going to stick it to big ride share. I fucking, I hail a cab. He gets in. What a bastard. You fucking bastard. He gets me in the car. And dude, uh, taxi from Chelsea to Brooklyn to my house, my doorstep, $24. That's crazy. $24. Because I feel like cabs are typically more expensive, but not, yeah. I don't know. But they're not. That's what you think. That's what I'm saying. It's like, they're like engineering us to be like the apps are the only way. The apps are the only way. Marty took our my roommate Marty took a fucking cab recently too, and he's like, dude, it was like twenty one dollars to get me from like the East Village home. I always take cabs when I get out in Port Authority because I don't feel like waiting for an Uber, and mm. they always are pretty yeah, and getting you get haggled outside of Port yeah. Authority. But I will say this: some cabbies do fuck you. Like you could tell they're taking bullshit routes and they're just trying to jack up. Oh yeah, yeah. If you find a good cab driver though, like it is cheaper and it's more efficient. They know where they're going. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, well, I knew this was gonna be a good one because most of the time you give them a location and they know where to go. But like when you like start throwing Brooklyn and shit, he gave me his phone to put it into the GPS, and so I'm like, yeah, why not? I mean, he's just taking the GPS That's at this easy, point. Yeah. And dude, you brought up Uber too. Fucking Uber Eats. Fr- oh, dude, I get fucked. Oh up my Uber god, dude! Grandpa. Friday night, I was. I don't even know what they're charging livid. for. Dude, I was livid. Me and Marty vibes. We're at the apartment Friday night. We're not doing anything. We're gonna just kind of be taking it easy, hang in. Dude, you know, so we're like, we had we 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 were gonna go out to lunch. We we ended up cooking a big lunch home, really fucking good. And so we're like, hey man, you know, we didn't go out for lunch. Let's let's order dinner in. It'll you know it's Friday night. Let's order something in. And so we're like, hey, you remember that ramen spot we had a few weeks ago? It was so fucking good. Like they literally got us off. Like I was sitting there. I'm like, this place is so fucking good. And if you like ramen, you know that's a great feeling. So I'm like. Let's get fucking Momo it ramen. Had your, it had your tongue doing jumping jacks. It had me like. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out Momo ramen. So we hit him up and we're like, Uber Eats ramen, spicy tonkatsu, you know, some dumplings on the Katsu side. Curry. And we're waiting. And it's like going to be about 50 minutes, whatever. You know, it's standard. It says it's two minutes away. The bike on the map is like almost at our house. It's, it's a it's, bike guy? Yeah. He, pull, oh, wow. he pulls up to the house. And then it says the order has been canceled. So at first we're what? like, so at first we're like, we've been scammed. Like they scammed us. The guy just took your eats. Yeah, like, yeah. Peace. So so Mar- you know, Marty hops on the computer and he starts doing the like, didn't get my order type bullshit. Uber says, oh, we're sorry, we weren't able to find a driver for you, so we canceled the order. You'll be fully refunded. So now I'm like, what? I'm like, Marty, call call the ramen place. And like, just like, I'm like, what the, f- that doesn't make any fucking sense. We get on the phone with the ramen place. He's like, yeah, we had your food like on the corner ready to go. And Uber called us and they said that they couldn't get a driver out there that they were going to pay us, but they're canceling the order. And we asked them, oh, can you just get another driver? And they're like, it's going to be too long. So we'll just pay you the money and they're going to be refunded and and so we're sitting there. That's I'm after like, after a process of like watching the whole thing get made, and like, dude, that's what I, I was sitting there. I'm like, I I understand that they're still paying the restaurant, and we're getting refunded, fine. But they literally made the food. Like the guy said, it was on the counter for like all of five minutes, and they're like, yeah, no, forget it, forget it. I'm like, what the fuck is this? That's what happened. We're relying on these things too much. If Momo Ramen just had a direct delivery, I bet you would call them up, got yeah. it delivered, done. Yeah, man, Instead, it's fucking it's nuts. Not even on top nuts. of that, like, they're just throwing in fees on fucking fees for God knows what. Like, you're going to pay the driver, give him his fee, but then it's like, service fee, this fee, go fuck yourself right. fee. You know, it's like King's County tax. Yeah. Like, in, like, Brooklyn, it's like. Tax you on every fucking street along the way. It's like, dude. Do you remember that time yourself. in uh, in college, our, one of our friends, Lenny, and then my yeah, cousin, Lenny. my cousin's friend, Alex, was visiting? Yeah. And they were, like, so fucking livid that they didn't get their food that one night in the Uber ride to the bar. They were just fucking saying the stupidest shit. Do you remember that? Yeah. 
like Lenny was like a real uptight guy. And yeah, like, like he's very like stiff. Yeah, and he was like, I just I can't believe they did. And my f- cousin's friend Alex is just like an absolute fucking idiot. And Lenny was like, I just cannot believe that they didn't give us our food. That was our food for our taking, and it's gone, and I am not nourished now. Yeah, now I have to, I have to go out tonight and get and get drunk on alcohol without any with sustenance no, no in my sustenance. belly. And yeah. then Alex is just like, Yeah, but the thing is with me, I thought they were I thought they were gonna bring the food to and the I, bar. I ordered so much stuff, so I thought I'm like, oh, it's gonna come to the bar, and then we'll get like a VIP table, and then I could just you know eat that stuff. Al- Alex was so disconnected from the situation. He didn't even know uh, what the fuck was going on. He literally did not care. He, he he was speaking as if the food's coming, and we had to be like, well, Alex, the, the food isn't coming, though. Yeah, he's like, you so, know? dude, I, I can't believe it's this late. I, like, I, when are they going to bring it? We're like, dude, you know, we're like, we're not even where we were. Like, we're, we're like, going Len- to a different location. Lenny is sitting here. His balls are in his ass. He's fucking so upset. Dude, and they were such a funny pair because, like, Lenny was just, like, once again, like, did not suffer fools, was so, like, mm-hmm. logical about everything. Mm-hmm. And Alex was just living in another realm. Like the conversations I'd hear them have sometimes was fucking hilarious. He'd be like, "Hey, Lenny, like, you be you be Alex in this situation." All right, all right. Uh, I so so you're you're Lenny. I'm Lenny. So <laughs> I know I'm Alex. You're Lenny. All right, all right. He would be like, "Hey, Lenny, what's that thing called when <laughs> when you know you're like your penis like starts to you know vibrate and get all crazy and then like mayonnaise shoots out." Like he just didn't know by Alex, and he's just like, uh, Alex, I, th- are, I think you're talking about ejaculating. Yeah, is like, that what you mean? Like, what's that? What's that? What What is that? What are you talking about? Well, Alex, this is, I mean, I, we take health classes in high school. I, I mean, I'm not gonna. I don't want to get into the oh, down I didn't and take dirty. Health classes. I, I I was homeschooled by uh, my my uncle Frederick, and he taught me some like health things, like, you know, eat eat clementines once a year. <laughs> yeah, and then Lenny would be like, "Well, I mean that is that is a healthy thing to do, but, uh, but but Alex, I, I don't think. Do you know anything about? Do you know anything about sex or, or sexual system? organs or? No, dude. Like, what are you fucking? Well, no, dude. Sex, sex is like if you're a girl or boy, right? Like that's what it is. Yeah, like I saw I saw that on the form. Right. It's like what is your sex? And then I, I wanted to write all the time, <laughs> but I I read that it was only male or female. And then other, and then it had to like specify. But you know, I was just thinking like maybe I write like yes, please to sex. yes, yes to sex. Um, Alex, I I think you really have a skewed vision of um just like reproductive sex. Well, I, yeah, my my eyes are really bad, so my vision is probably a little skewed. I don't have the right sk- yeah, pr- when I prescription. Was younger, I got hit in the head with a wall ball, and yeah. I've never seen right since. Yeah, someone said double rainbow. <laughs> And you gotta run, and I started sprinting to the wall like really fast, but not fast enough. And they drilled me in the back of my skull. <laughs> but the thing is, is we were playing wall ball with a baseball, so and there was no wall. So it punctured the back of my skull. <laughs> and now I was only two years old when this happened, so I still had a soft baby head. And um, um, Alex, I think what you're talking about is severe brain trauma, and I I don't know what you mean that you played wall ball with a baseball and there was no wall that. That sounds like you were being hunted by other people and having baseballs thrown at you. Alex, I don't think, I mean, it's, I, I don't want to be a skeptic or anything, but. I, There's a lot of flaws it, in Is it story. even possible that you could have been sprinting to a wall at two years old? <laughs> well, yeah, I learned, I learned how to walk at one. Yeah, I was real fast. They did I a used PBS to do, special I used it. to do doo-wop dances. <laughs> when I was one, I'd be like, scoobity wop scoobity doobity wop Yeah, I was like so good at walking and doing stuff that the PBS did a special on me when I was a baby. It was called, it was, <laughs> it was called the Special Boy, <laughs> <laughs> and they did like they did videos of me, like music videos, like I did Michael Jackson, and I they scoo up and do up. I was yeah, dancing. I was just doing. I was little, like doing little dances, and they loved it. It was the great. best part though. The best part was they had catering, and you know they they gave me fucking. There was cream soda, French fries, burgers. They had all kinds of good shit. I I I enjoyed the uh, the craft services more than I actually enjoyed doing doo wop. And I was only one years old, so I they had they had the years old. they had the puree everything. So everything I ate was just puree it to was like a sauce. Sippy cup. It was, it was like it was like a hamburger. But it was like applesauce. But that that's why I still eat all my food sauce. You guys yeah, know that. I love puree in all my food. Um. 
Alex, I think what you're talking about here is you were you were in some type of study where they were trying to figure out what was wrong with you. No, uh, do, what? What are you, dude? What are you? What are you smoking drugs again? What are you a drug addict, Lenny? Come on, Lenny, you're crazy, man. I don't know, man. I mean, just to answer your original question, I think you're talking about masturbating and ejaculation. Oh wait, wait, wait. So it's not mask debating. M- well, mask. Wait, what? Yeah, when you when you when you rub when you when you tickle in your chicken so much that he throws up. That's not called mask debating. A like, message you know, from you... uh, another one of our sponsors, uh, the Wallet Wallet. This was really cool. You know, we um, were a little hesitant about the Wallet Wallet. Yeah, as you saw last week. I mean, it is um, a wallet. It's like it's half a product there. It's, it's, it's a wallet even a product. For wallet, and we were a little like, oh, well, what is this about? And we didn't know if they were going to want to continue sponsoring us. But in fact, it's the opposite. They loved us so much that they've doubled our pay. They've sent us some Wallet Wallets. They're on the way. And they've asked that we do some, like, you know, audience testimonials. So a fan of the show already called in and said yeah. he, he bought the wallet wallet using our code. Which was a surprise in and of itself. Yeah. You totally. know, I didn't. I honestly figured that the only money we were going to be making off this was just the fees that they're paying us. I never thought yeah. we would actually get a promo code used. Yeah. But they sent a testimonial in. They called in. We haven't reviewed this it yet. A, yeah, we haven't listened, but this is a real fan of the show. Yeah. That used the code, bought the wallet, wallet, and he's going to tell us what he thinks of it. You know, yeah, I'll, good let me, uh, I'll pull it up here. Pull it up. I'm very excited to hear it. And listen, folks, I mean, great product. It's um, <laughs> it's kind of great. It's a wallet. For, yeah. It's a, it's a wallet for your wallet. You anyway, know? um, let's. Good. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm, inter- I'm interested to hear what they say. Uh, we're not going to open it up with that. Let's hear it, dude. I'm I think so we can excited. settle with uh, iTunes or QuickTime. Hey, how you doing? The Good Crack Podcast. I just want to let you know that I, I love this podcast so much. I love the advertisements. Great. And uh, I'd like to preface this by saying that I ordered the 321 cigarettes. And, you know, what a wow. deal. Holy oh, shit. Not only Two products. Not only get me off of my traditional cigarettes, I'm on these healthier ones now. And they make me feel a lot better. Uh, but I ordered the Wallet Wallet and... I'm very confused by this because I thought this was going to be a great thing for me. I, you know, I'm always losing my wallet, so I need, you know, a wallet for my wallet. And then it came in a box, and I, I open it up, and there's just horse hay, like just hay in the box. And I was very confused. I said, oh, maybe this is how it comes in. I'm rummaging around, and then I find a little envelope, and then there's, like, red splotches all over it. And I said, you know, how um, could the wallet wallet fit inside of this little envelope? Maybe, uh... But, what the fuck? Maybe we should. Have what the fuck? That. Um, what the fuck? I mean, you know, I don't know. There, there's no like stipulation in the contract about like talking about. I amounts. don't. He, they, First of all, fucking... we just we just gave away half the ad. The three two one cigarettes. He loved three two one cigarettes. Yeah. I thought the wallet wallet was gonna be a positive one because the wallet wallet company sent us that. I mean, they're paying us. They're paying us forty fucking dollars a month. <laughs> all right. Well, there's there's like a there's a few seconds left. I and then I open it, and then there was just clumps of hair. Like human um, hair. Maybe we should. Like pebbles. Pebbles. And then, like blood. Uh, there was just a lot of blood. We got to turn that off. Yeah. yeah um, I don't know what the. That wasn't what we were expecting at all, uh, folks. You know, I, I sit here and I think what it's worth. Um, it's worth $40. It's worth $40, I guess. I mean, listen, guys, I guess contractually we're obligated to tell you to go buy the wallet wallet. Um, and let's just leave it at that. Yeah, you know Go what? buy the wallet wallet. First off, let's just say this. I haven't purchased a wallet wallet yet. That was an isolated case. That guy ordered a wallet wallet and happened to get an envelope of hair, blood, and pebbles. Um, maybe it's a different experience every time. Maybe it's like a mystery. I'd order the wallet wallet. Go to walletwallet.com and use code smoking crack. That's yeah no it's walletwallet.com slash good crack podcast. Use code uh, smoking crack. I think they're giving you like they bumped it up from six to like eight percent off. Listen, don't feel um, obligated. Let's just it pretend we didn't is. play that yeah. clip. You know that was we who we don't know the fuck that was. That could have been anyone. Yeah. So thanks, Wallet Wallet. Right. Appreciate <laughs> it, Alex. <laughs> Well, well, I think phonetically it sounds like Christ, Al. Okay. Um, it, no, Alex. When you when you give yourself self pleasure, it's masturbating, not mask debating. That's not. 
That's yeah, but not like, a real thing, Alex. Isn't the same thing because you get pleasure out of both, and both end with the mayonnaise coming from your body, the homemade mayo? Well, when you debate masks and COVID and mandating and mandates, there there is no uh, ejaculation, so to speak. I mean, I assume, like, some people get derived pleasure from that sure, because their life sure. are meaningless and they have nothing better to do, but... Hey, I don't, I don't know what that has to do with sexual, uh, you know, <laughs> what am I to say? But, Alex, I think you need serious help, my friend. You should be educated on the basic health systems. Dude, I really feel like a special boy after learning all this. I, I feel, feel like, like I've unlocked the keys to the universe. My teacher. And me and Joey are just sitting in the front of an Uber. Yeah, we're there for all this. We're like, what, what the fuck? And listen, none of these conversations happen as we just said them. Yeah, they but, do. But, uh, I mean... It wasn't too far off, if you know what I'm saying. I I have mayonnaise all over me. I can't continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alex, <laughs> uh, oh, well, dude, they they both loved music, both of them. That was one. That was one thing. It was so funny to watch them bond over because Lenny was so uptight, and like you would never think that Lenny, like when you looked at him, you would never the thought of in your head of like, oh, he likes rap music. That was never a thing. You would never expect it. But they really bonded over rap music. Yeah, they really did. And they would, they would, um, they would convene on Friday afternoons after New Music Friday. They'd be like, "Dude, you listen to new Travis Scott? Yeah. You listen to the new, um, you know, Baby Keem? Yeah, really dope." And they would it, like we'd listen weird. sometimes, and it was like the craziest conversation. It'd be like Le- Lenny would be like, "Yo, you hear that new Travis shit? That shit's so fucking heat. It got my balls be tingling." And then Alex would be like. <laughs> Dude, holy dude! I was up till like four a.m. I've I've listened through the album twelve times. What do you think about Fantano's review? I I find it flawed and a bit inconspicuous and facetious. Yeah. Do you do you know yeah. what those words mean? Fuck. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> do you <laughs> then they would be like yeah and then they would be like <laughs> <laughs> you got some shit right here oh shit and then I'd hear them in like you know that's where our that's where a second ad will be <laughs> yeah. we're gonna have like ads back to back <laughs> uh fuck and then Lenny would be like um so what did you think of Fantano's new review of the album and then like Alex would say something like um yeah, dude. I mean, like, I, I don't know. And then, <laughs> you gotta save this bit. I don't know oh, I'm doing. fucking sweating my balls off in here. He'd be like, he'd be like, yeah, dude, it got me so wild. My, my sack was sweating like <laughs> nothing I could ever fucking believe before. We're dude, cutting this. We're cutting this. Don't worry. About it. Travis Scott is the greatest. He fucked ever. my mom. Ever. I wish he fucked my mom. Oh my god. What would it be like if we had the band? That's a good question, dude. What would it be like? What kind of music do you like, Joe? I mean, I'm I'm like, uh, I'm very diverse. I love a lot of different Same. things. I, I love think we're kind of similar in that. Sense. Yeah, love like I love classic rock. I love jazz. I like Same. house music. I love rap. I will have love a playlist hip-hop. that goes from like Frank Ocean to The Strokes to 40s jazz. You yeah, know? yeah. Same here. Or it'll go from like. Like, I, I'm really big into the New York, like, drill scene. Like, all these new rappers coming mm-hmm. up, like, especially in Brooklyn. Yeah, they have But all the, the music is just straight up trapping music and, like, drug dealing type shit. Like, yeah. but it's fire. It's so much good shit. But my ad, like, I'll go from, like, literally slang and rocks of dope to, I'm in New York, state of my band. Like, it's just all over the fucking place. If we place. had a band, I feel like we'd have to be, like, a rock band or, mm-hmm. like, something like the beat. Like, I love the Strokes. Or, like, I, a like a rocky pop type yeah, thing. I feel like the Strokes are dope because they're just, like, jeans, leather jackets, cool, long hair. Right, like, right. Like, Julian Casablanca sounds like a fucking nut job when you hear right. him speak. But, like, yeah. I'd let him fuck my wife, you know? Yeah, me too. If I could me have, too. like, a Julian Casablanca baby. Julian Casablanca, I'm going to put it out there. Like, if you ever want to hang out, fuck my wife. I'm not married, but we could work something out. I'm gonna, it, sli- I'm gonna slip it in too. Brandon Fraser, everyone's really excited for you. They're really excited for what you're doing. He cried from the support of the internet. Please, Brandon Fraser, fuck my wife. You heard it here, folks. First. Please, Brandon Fraser just secured the new role of fucking Joey's wife. Yep. But yeah, if we had a band, I don't know, maybe we do a little strokes. I think you and I. I just recently rewatched the Bee Gees documentary. 
I feel like we do good in that sphere, like a 70s funk band. Yeah, like, dude. You know, disco. Funk, disco. A little bit of like... Clam. We, you know, we, ha- we have recorded some BG songs, me and Joey, separately. But we yeah, we'll, thing. that'll be on the Patreon How when we get it up. your love? How deep is your love? I really need to learn. Cause we're living in a world of fools. Breaking us down When they all should let us be We belong to you and me It would be great but, uh, yeah, we would really And we could both hit the falsettos We'll both be on the yeah. like Clam That's nice and You know what's good guys good is we, we, At least we're fun And like even if we were respectable musicians And like we were just good people I think you and I purposefully would go down like the movie biopic path where like we'd get in. Tra- we'd, just tra- we'd, yeah, we'd be Speaking mad at Speaking of Bee Gees, we'd be like, tragedy! And then we'd just quickly change it. Living it up in the nights on Broadway! <laughs> yeah. So then that would be like, we'd start off small, like we're friends. We'd like everyone yeah, would love we'd us. Yeah, we'd be very innovative. Innocent, yeah. Very innocent. And then it's like, hey, Joey. Fun. I don't know why, but we'd have British accents all of a sudden or like Australian, like the Bee Gees. would be like, hey, Joey. I just I just snorted something called I don't even know Josh man. I just snorted something called cocaine off some girl's tights. You want to try some? I'm from down under. I like this new cocaine bit. It's real good stuff. It's really good, mate. It's real good. You like cocaine, Joey? And then I'd You'd say like, I don't know something that like is. that. Yeah, I can't you do be, Australian. You'd be hesitant. And then I'd be like, come on, mate, it's just cocaine. You'd love it. <laughs> and then I would be the drug addict, and you'd be, like, innovating music. I'd be, I'd be the one who gets AIDS. Yeah, well, yeah, and then I would be coming, like, And then the you, would, you would, I'd get AIDS, you'd get AIDS, everyone would get AIDS. And, and then, then we'd all overdose, but then we'd come yeah. out of the overdose, and we'd mm. be like, one last album, mate. I think we can make a real fun album if we really try. Do a huge benefit concert for ourselves. For our drug addictions. Yeah, for like drug addiction. And so then like it would be the rise research. and fall. We'd get off the drugs, but we'd also be dying from some diseases. Yep. And then, you know, that would be our movie. And then the thing is, in the end, like we would have like a new, we'd clone ourselves and that would be like an innovative thing. Yeah. We'd be a cool band. It we'd would do be, a lot of drugs. We'd fuck really, each other's wives a lot. Yeah, it would, d- it, would be, it would be something like the end of Dallas Buyers Club, like when Leto gets the AIDS and, you know, kicks the, it would be one of those really heartfelt, heartfelt like, wow. Fuck. They we'd need gone one too survivor. soon. Yeah. Gone too soon. Who would be the third bandmate? I don't know. Maybe Lenny or Alex. And but they would they would live to tell the tale, and it would be horrible. Like Lenny telling the tale, he would he would like play the same scene over and like you would watch the documentary or <laughs> biopic, and it would you Matt would be like, I think I'm dying, mate. And I then and I'm then dying. it would it would fade to black, and it would go back to that shot. I think I'm dying, mate. And you'd be like, wait, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> And it, and then it would like accidentally cut back to like our our first show, and then cut back to like yeah. the benefit. And if concert, Alex be was all the sole like, survivor of our band for whatever reason, he'd be in our band. We'd both be gone, and then it would be the ending scene, like after our final like thing, the the credits would like start to come up. And be like, in 1995, Matt and Joey died of of you know, drug addiction and several other things because they were in a cool band. But their their story lives on with the third member, who no one knew was in the group, Alex Alex Garland. And then it would be him on stage, and he'd be like, it's like a new concert, and it's at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, like he's the guy who yeah. still performs and the And one music. of our famous songs would start like on a slow piano thing, and he'd be like, Bow. this is a very special concert for me. My good friends, Joey Bow. and Matt, had died. Bow. And I want to keep their legacy on by giving everyone in the audience Free bunny rabbits. Here you go, folks. Check under your seats. It's a bunny rabbit. And, and there's a bunch like, of what the fuck? bunch like, of Holland Lop bunnies just hopping all over. Yeah, and the people would be like, "What the fuck?" And then the song would start. Run to me whenever you're alone. And then the well, it'd be like, "Run to, to me whenever you're lonely. lonely." And then then Lenny would like emerge from the dead, and he'd be like, "Run to me." If you need a home girl now, now and, and then, then I you need, need someone, someone older. So, so darling, you, you run to me. me. And then slowly, like it'd be like really nice, like dramatic shots of them, but it would pan to the crowd, and there's these like rabid bunnies all over the place. And then shitting. they start doing sex acts on stage, <laughs> <laughs> and our legacy is tarnished. 
<laughs> with one, with one it's live just show. The headline is like, and for some reason, this show tarnished their entire reputation. We don't know who let this happen. Wait. It was Alex, not a positive Alex, ending at all. Alex from the Cock Boys did what? Swipe up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. The, uh, re- the, re- the benefit concert for the greatest uh, band that died uh, did what? That's Swipe good. Swipe up stuff. through this. Uh, that's good crack. fucking stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, our band would be sick. We'd just do all the drugs and have all the sakes. Sexual. Not to mention all of like the crazy like fake business we get to conduct as a band because we'd have like endorsements out the ass and just there'd be a scene where it's like they need to fucking pay me. Everybody knows I'm the best in the band. Sexually. Sexually. Uh, Aye, what do you want from me, Joey? I'm late because I was sucking on some peat. That's all I think. Maybe you'd like me a bit better if you did some of this booger sugar, mate. Some cocaine. <laughs> Everyone's doing cocaine in 2021. Just had a brain aneurysm. I'm sorry, I blacked out while That's I did that. That's good. That's good stuff. Yeah, dude, it would be like fake business. We'd be in a record deal. How, how is your fake business going, by the way? How's it? How, listen, how's the response after our first podcast? I've gotten some good feedback from people. It's been really good. Um, over, uh, just about like a little over 200 downloads and you know streams and Between you know both just podcast forms because we have it on Apple Music. Yeah, and we're Spotify on we're on now, everything folks. now. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, so YouTube. So like a couple hundred views or hundred like seventy hey. or something on hey. YouTube. But we'll listen, take it. We're, we're growing, folks. You know, Tell I'm your not. Friends. We're not too happy with the viewership on YouTube. Not the numbers aren't what we hope they would be. But Spotify is great. You know Spotify what? I'd rather great. people like you know. I've lo- even though we're filming this, I love podcasts as an audio right, form. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's way to that's work. what it is. On your way home from work. Yep. I think people are getting really used to that. We're also, when we launched, we were only on Spotify for the first two days. We're now on Apple Music, a podcast. So you could find us there. It'll be very easy. Yeah. Every Monday or Sunday, you'll get our podcast. Yeah. The, I mean, the viewership on Spotify was fucking fantastic. I think we had an average watch time of an hour and a minute, and the episode was an hour and nine. Wow. So good stuff there. I mean, hey. Tell your friends, folks. Going good. Just keep spreading the love. But I've gotten some great response. I've had some people say they're huge fans. I've yeah. seen people say they love certain bits. Yeah, yeah. People How, people love Hezbollah pe- stuff. People love Hezbollah yeah. stuff. We haven't talked to any Hezbollah yeah, yet. Yeah, we're working on getting him on the show. It's probably going to take a year. but We've gotten in touch with his people, but the thing we realize is the only way we could really get a direct line to him is through Carrier Pigeon. Yeah. So right now we're in the process of tra- trying to figure out and how the to problem with Carrier Pigeon, Russia. yeah, when you're sending Carrier Pigeons to Chechnya, they use them as like a target practice, like trap and skeet shooting. They just have a field that like where yeah, the pigeons go. Yeah, and it gets really hard because most of the pigeons get in, shot um, down in Russia area are like actually drones that uh, Putin had put out. So like they get yep. crossed in the mix sometimes. Yeah, so it's tough. But I mean, as we got far some as good like, followers on the the Instagram account. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Yeah, we do yep. have Twitter. We should make Twitter. Yeah, I think we're gonna get on Twitter. I mean, Twitter, Twitter's. Twitter's where we thrive. Me and Joey share the Instagram accounts. So like, you know, I'll be moderating, he'll be moderating. I was yeah. like, yeah, we're getting some dope followers. We're posting some content. And yeah, like, yeah. A lot of friends and family following. Thank you for the support. Yeah, and we I appreciate saw, like, it. some very random people following that I don't know how they found us, but it well, seems to have I something got, to do with you. I got a follow on Twitter the other day I was very excited about. Um, Dr. Shiva G. Kumar. Um, this guy. He um, is the ex-state commissioner for persons with disability social welfare department for the government of Bihar. And I assume that is in India or Thailand. It may be Thailand because I think this is, that's Thai. I think that's Thai writing. It looks like Thai. Yeah, so, or, or Taiwan, sorry, not Thailand. Yeah, um, not Taiwan. No? I don't know. Yeah. What I, 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 who the fuck We knows? were the guys that are talking about how we don't know anything about science. You try yeah, we don't hard. Know about, I'm, you know, we're not trying to hurt feelings we, yeah, here. We we're don't, trying. We here. don't know. We have no idea. But anyway, he followed me on Twitter. He's, he seems like a cru- really cool guy. I mean, you know, he seems really cool. That's what I'm saying. It seems like all these people in their bios have something to do with, like, crypto companies? Well, that's another... So, fake business... I've been, I've been still conducting fake business. Oh, you're still I, doing a bit of fake business? Yeah, I mean... I was really, I was heavily invested on a property in North Dakota that we were getting ready to make an offer on. Yep. That was and under the Jim Bloom Third Horn Investment. Yeah, Bureau. under Jim Bloom, under Jim Bloom's uh, supervision, uh, I sent a follow. Actually, I called. I did a follow up voicemail. They haven't gotten back to me, so I, you know, I tend to believe that, you know, market's hot, and they might have gotten cold feet, and they might have moved on. Maybe they did, but. For me, that counts as a close. We close that one. Any, you know, anything of that matter, that's a closing. But it seems like ever since I started diving into fake business in general, it's really fun. But I know what you're gonna say. Ever since I started, fake business attracts fake business. 
and it's the gateway to real business. Yep. And ever since I started doing that, I've been getting an overwhelming amount of DMs on Instagram. I think I have eight requests. Right now, folks, our Instagram page for the Good Crack Podcast yeah. is it's 300-something followers. Yeah, but this is on my ha- personal. Oh, but even on our, our podcast page, it's half family and friends and then half people that seem to be working numerous amounts of pyramid schemes and crypto yeah. companies. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, man, look at eight message requests. Um, You know, this kid sends me a picture of him on his yacht. And he, <laughs> he just said that to you? Yeah, he said that and he can said- we show this? Could you- yeah, let me see if I can pull up my Instagram DMs on here. I think I can. But anyway, he sends me like a picture of his yacht and he's like, want more likes on IG? Saw you were an influencer slash biz owner on the come up following Gary V. I mean, dude. How did he even make that all assumption? These, all, Where does it say you're an I influencer? Think, I really think that it's coming because I go on to Gary V's posts and I post a lot of Who's Gary V for those who don't know? He sells junk um, <laughs> spirituality. He's, he's that guy on you'll see on social media sometimes. It's like, I, I didn't start making content till I was 30. Think about that, kids. Fuck college. Fuck your family. You want to th- think about like the possibilities and what you're doing? You want to think about what it takes to start a business? What you do is take your family, bring them into your shed, and say you have a birthday surprise for them. Shoot them back in the head with a small caliber rifle. Bury their bodies in the yard. Take their life savings from the insurance claim and put it all in NFTs. That's what I'm talking about. And also, you have a cell phone in your pocket. Make content every day, 10 times a day, because that's what the world and business is about. He's like, listen, if I if I stayed in my basement and just did all the wine stuff, people were telling me, stick to wine, stick to that. Fuck that. Fuck them. Because what you got to do is you got to take a business and you got to scale it. And it's going to take time. But the most important thing is happiness. Are you happy? Kill your parents. A lot of people aren't happy. Are you happy? I know people that have $10. They're the fucking happiest people in the world. And then I know guys that I missed out on Uber. I um, I could have invested. I didn't invest. But that's not a loss. It's a lesson. I almost well, invented listen, it. you made it. You were home with the Delta virus. You caught it. And what better way to celebrate beating COVID than to have a nice hit, a nice drag of some smooth carcinogens. Matt, where can the people get it? Folks. As I said last week, three, two, one reasons to smoke cigarettes. Folks, you're celebrating. You just beat a deadly pandemic. And not only did you beat it, this is your third or fourth time beating it. This is the fourth variant, and you've gotten the best way. And it hasn't killed you. You're still walking around. We know that. We know. Listen, the antibodies run out eventually. Yeah, but you know what helps them stay a while a little longer? A little bit of fun in your bloodstream. And you know where that fun comes from? Some cool, sweet nicotine toasted from the French Alps where the 321 cigarettes acquires their tobacco. 321 cigarettes, folks, they're fun. They're delicious. They're healthier than the leading cigarette brands. I smoke, I think, upwards to five packs a day now. 321 reasons to smoke cigarettes? They're cool. They're healthy. They're fun. These these cigarettes, they're um, acoustic. They're not Greece, electric. the movie, um, James Dean. Um, Mad Men. Mad Men. The Sopranos. The Sopranos. Every TV show you know and love, um, cigarettes are a big part of. Rock and roll music. Yep. Everyone loves... Everyone. <laughs> I don't know, folks. I don't even they know. Should, they should make a new show and call it Everybody Loves Cigarettes. It's like Everybody Loves Raymond, but yeah. instead of Raymond, it's a human-sized anthropomorphic cigarette that just goes... I don't know. Ah. I'm going to take a hit of this. You know, <laughs> it might be the thing to do. Hey, come smoke, smoke on this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So actually, we're just so happy to be with three, two, one. Yeah, you guys are great. Yeah, and three, two, one. Actually, they gave us our own little tagline that is for their company. It's smoke them if you got them, folks. Yep. Three, two, one cigarettes. Three, two, one cigarettes. You can go to www. three, two, one cigarettes. dot com slash crack and use code oh no I smoke the rock again for twenty percent off your order of either a retail or a wholesale package. Three, two, one cigarettes, folks. Three hundred and twenty one reasons to live again. Smoke them if it's you a got lesson. Them. I almost invented Uber, but then I killed my parents instead. And look at me now. All right, I think I actually can bring it up. Let's yes, I can. This. That's perfect. All right, so here, let me bring this up here. All right, so Instagram, this is my message requests. And so there's a couple, you know, porn stars saying, check out my free cams page. Yeah. So look at this kid. He sent, he sent me a post of his, and it says, yacht party. Want more likes on IG? Saw you're an influencer. 
Uh, Kiko Mac runs the best engagement service on IG right now for more likes and views. Helped over 2,000 uh, clients. DM him boost. The best part, too, is like you get the DM from some random fucking account, Dale Hawkins. And it's a but fucking kid it's like, on a it's, yacht. It's reach out to Kiko Mac. Reach out to this Could person. Could you imagine that that actually probably works on some people? It does. It definitely does. Oh, my God. A yacht? And then I this, love yachts. This was a good one. This one this was, was like, my favorite. This is my, this is like these are the kind of spam DMs I want. It's like, hi, I can tell you love beautiful things. You have to see Sandra Jordan, Prima Alpaca. You'll love it. And this is a video of an alpaca, and this is a, an Instagram page strictly devoted to alpacas. And this woman is doing spam marketing for her, her right. alpaca. It's, I mean, Instagram she's page. doing God. She's doing God's work. Hey, listen, it's better than like you trying to get me to join your fucking boss. Baby well, now page. here's the other ones. Ronald trades one, two, four. He said, hello. Yeah, we have a lot of, you know, listen for the nah. listeners that are crypt. I, I don't think they nah, listen we're to not the show. Get into that now. I think they're just trying to do fake business. This one was like, you want follower and provide you 100 K <laughs> follower and unlimited likes in your Insta pick. If you want free demo available. You hear that, folks? Unlimited likes. That and then this guy, he has 103,000 followers, and he's just crushing it. Wow. Just crushing it, dude. Yeah, I think uh, social media should be illegal. And then we got Crypto Ayani. Hey, Joey. It's just, it's check out my sexy video type bullshit. Click, I mean, Click the link. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Those are great. I love when like you get added to it. Uh, you look at your message request, and it's you and like 40 other people, and it's a person being like, Check out my hot sexy link online for I sex. Love, I love giving blowjobs. Press link below to redeem free blowjobs. I love show video of my pussy in, in big boobies. You click link for free and I give you money to watch link because I saw sexy hot. I'm sitting here and I'm like, when am I going to get the DM request to join ISIS K? Their ketamine branch. The you ketamine heard about branch. that? Yeah, they're just, ISIS K? It's like ISIS, but they're all in special K. It's that or it's like, it's like, I was like telling my one friend, I'm like, ISIS K is what a white girl tells her parents when she's like joining ISIS. They're like, Marie, what are you doing? You're throwing your fucking life away. What's wrong with you? I'm going to join ISIS, Dad. K. Okay. That's brilliant. And guys. that's it. Guys, that's called comedy. Look it's it like, up in the fucking dictionary. I want to go out and I want to have fun. I want to feel alive. I want to feel a part of something bigger than myself. So I'm joining ISIS. Okay. And I'm going to make big booms, Dad. Big boom. <laughs> oh, God. So it's that's that. Crap. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm like, when am I going to get something interesting? Yeah. The alpaca one was like the one where I'm like, hey, that's fine. look at this. Alpacas. Look at this. What are we doing? Dude, I can't believe it. What a, what a great week we're having. We need to get to a board of ed meeting now. I, yeah. just, I just miss being involved in the town politics. What about like in high school and like when we'd have to go to like assemblies and shit and like we'd have like fucking some SRO officer preaching at us for some stupid shit. Oh, dude, that was the fucking, that was the best, man. That was hilarious. That was the best. They're like, we know what's going on here. Yeah, dude, like, you um, guys are all fucking high. They would always do it for junior formals and prom, prom yeah. you know, and you know, I remember being in the auditorium and we're sitting there thinking, what the fuck? I mean, it gets you out of class, so that was cool. But comes in, you know, fully decked out in his officer getup. Hey, hey, how you guys doing? Good to see you guys. A lot of familiar faces in the crowd. A lot of familiar faces. And it's like, well, yeah, we have been going to high school here for the last three, four years. We see you every day in the hall. <laughs> yeah, so um, prom's coming up. Prom's coming up. Fun time. Memories. Memories to be made. Um, Listen. I'm, I'm going to cut to the chase. We're not going to baby you guys. You guys are 17, 18 years old. Some of you are 16. God bless. Anyway, we're going to get to the bottom of things because you're all going to go to prom this weekend, this Friday. Big day. Lots of memories to be made. Lots of dresses to be worn and tuxedos, tuxedos to get fitted for. Corsages. Yeah, it's going to be good. You know, a nice corsage. You might get lucky. With Who a knows? good suit. That's not my department. And they come in and he's like, you know, listen, you guys are going to go to prom, all right? It's afterwards that we're concerned about. We Listen, we know what you guys do. We know what you do. You go to prom and then you go to your buddy's house afterwards. Some of you are going to be getting on party buses. Some of you are going to be going to prom houses. G -g Guys, we're not fucking stupid, okay? We know what you're doing, and you're doing one thing and one thing only. We know what goes on on these buses. We know what goes on at these prom houses. What we're trying to do 
is we're trying to get you guys in here and maybe prevent the death of two. Or we want to we want to pre- prevent the tragedy from happening. And so that's why I'm going to teach you about drugs. You kids, you think we're fucking stupid. Statistically, we told your parents this. This is actually a real quote they said once. Statistically, if your kid's in the bathroom more than eight minutes, he's smoking crack. Or he's snorting coke. Or he's injecting peyote hallucinogenic cactus ayahuasca. And so, you guys are going to go to prom. It's going to be fun. You're going to do the pictures. Your parents are going to be excited. You're going to look at your date. I remember looking at my date and thinking, golly, what a fucking lucky guy I am to be taking this beautiful broad to the fucking school dance. And that's what you're going to do. But it's afterwards we're concerned about. You're going to get home afterwards. You're going to take your tuxedo off. You're going to put some deodorant on. Maybe wipe your body down from all the sweat when you were dancing the cake by the ocean on the dance floor. <laughs> you're going to open your drawer and you're going to pull out four things. A spoon, a lighter, a baggie of H, <laughs> and a syringe. We know you got we know, you know, We know you're pre-gaming with H. But anyway. I <laughs> just think that every kid is doing heroin. He's like, I'm 17. Like, he's, saying, he's saying this. He's like... You're going to pull some things out. You're going to pull out a nice pair of jeans. You're going to pull out an Affliction t-shirt. You're going to pull out a fresh pair of Air Force Ones. Girls, you're going to be pulling out Rolling Stone t-shirts even though you know one song. Maybe some of you are going to wear jeggings. Maybe some are going to wear leggings. Or maybe some of you are going to wear short skirts with nothing underneath. God fucking forbid that was ever my daughter. God fucking forbid I would smack her across the room. I didn't say that. Sorry, I'm not getting into this. I didn't this is say personal. that. I- Anyway, we know what you guys are doing afterwards. You're going on these buses, you're going to these houses, you're doing drugs, and you're drinking alcohol, and you're getting fucked up. All right? We want to prevent tragedy. So, I'm not sure if you guys know how this works when when you're doing drugs or when you're drinking. You have a base dopamine level. This is your dopamine. This is your base level dopamine. All right, and it rides on that line. It's all about science. You notice. I don't know. You walk into the party, and your buddy Jimmy Boots says, "Hey, dude, here's a here's a Michelob. Let's get fucked up." Hey, so, give me a white claw. Hey, put a little cocaine in it. Hey, there's no laws when you're drinking claws. False. There are fucking laws, and if we catch you guys, we're gonna be fucking pounding you into the pavement. And listen, I've reached out to their fucking marketing team, and believe me, they're in deep fucking water. And believe me. There are fucking laws. There's no laws. matter what. And guess what? There's not one law. There's not two law. There's not even three. There's a lot of laws. <laughs> <laughs> there's and, a bunch of them. And so he's sitting So many, there. I don't even know them all. So now by this point, everyone's dialed in because everyone- This really happened, everyone's, right? Yeah, everyone's sitting there and they're thinking, this is gonna, like, this is funny. So everyone's, everyone's dialed in and he's like, so your buddy, he hands you a Michelob. You're gonna get drunk. So you drink the beer. You drink the beer, now look at your dopamine. It's going up. And now your dopamine is riding higher than your base. Your base is down here. And now you're feeling good. You're thinking you can have a conversation. You can talk to that chick from biology. You can uh, tell your friend that you might want to engage in homosexual erotica with them if they get drunk enough. I know what it's like, folks. You feel that feeling. And that feeling's like, you know, when you start off at that base level, it's like when you're a kid. And your mom goes over one of those hills Base really quick. Right and then you're a young man and your balls haven't dropped yet. And you feel a little funny feeling in your stomach. And you like that feeling, but you don't know why. That's what you're feeling. And you say, what do I want? I want more. And then, so so now your dopamine is higher and you're riding over your base dopamine. Now, that, that Michelob is going to wear off. And so when it does, your dopamine is going to drop. But notice, look at my hands. So notice. It's a right angle. Now, your base dopamine is lower than your initial so now your initial base dopamine, let's say it was 70, now it's 65. And so now you're at the party and you say, uh, you know, I'm going to do another bump. I'm going to pop another molly. I'm going to smoke another dub. Oh, uh, Frankie Stigutz just pulled out this new stuff. It's called ayahuasca. It's I'm from gonna, the Amazon. I'm going to have a cup DMT, of ayahuasca. Deemsters. I'm going to do oh, some Deemsters. What is this, DMT? You're smoking Deemsters out of a glass pipe? Of course you are. We're not fucking stupid. Right. Who so do you now, think comes to these parties at the end when the lights are on and see what's on the floor? Syringes, coke bag, <laughs> ayahuasca, dead frogs and toads. We know you're licking toads. Who do you think we're fucking stupid? 
I was a kid once. And Back so then we'd smoke dubs. And so you sit in there and you're like, well, I'm going to do another bump. I'm going to take another molly. I'm going to smoke another dub. I'm going to hit another rock. <laughs> and so now that's going to take your base dopamine higher again. So now you're back up. You're feeling good again. You're going to start dancing. Electric Avenue. You just Avenue. took four different hallucinogens. This is where you want to be. That, that one kid who does all the Deemsters, he's running the playlist. He's now playing you're not Electric just feeling Avenue. That pe- feeling in the balls when you go over a hill. Right. Now you're on the mummy boat ride at the carnival. And you're at the tippy and top. And you're at the tippy top. And that top. feeling in your balls is just... And you're just fucking... You're riding that thing. And then now it's 12.01. Your dopamine is dropping. But look at this. Now it's even lower than the second... So now your base dopamine started at 70. Now you're riding high at 55. So your base dopamine is getting lower and lower. And so basically, kids, what I'm telling you is this. If you do drugs, if you drink, if you engage in these kinds of activities... You're going to turn into a ball of mush. Your brain is going to become mushy, goopy applesauce that, well, it's not going to function right. And so then when you get into the real world and you have to handle millions of dollars for a client when you're working in finance, you're going to end up taking that money and burning it. You, the client's going to kill themselves. You're going to be out of a job. And you're going to have nothing to look forward to every day except going home and smoking a bunch of Deemsters. And what was it all for? It was because in high school at junior prom, yep. you said, you know what? I'm yep. going to lick this toad. I'm going to shoot up. I'm going to speedball on this fucking eight ball of heroin. I'm going to mix up cocaine, Red Bull, and crack in a, in a syringe, and I'm going to shoot it up. Yep. And you said, you know what? It's fun. I'm doing it once. Why not? Yep. this. It's not worth it because in 10 years' time, you'll crash the economy and the subprime mortgage market, and the world will be in disarray, and it'll be your fault. And so that's pretty much how it goes Yeah, I at, at that. these types of things. Those were fun, though. They were. I mean... We, me and my friends enjoyed him for the laughs. And then Alex is in the audience and he's like, so are you telling me that? It sounds like his son. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it would be his son. It's his son. Alex. Hey, hey dad, um, are you can, I, can I do Deemsters though? <laughs> Shut the hell up, Alex. The last thing your fucking brain needs is more Deemsters. You're telling me, dad, that there's, there's things I could put in my body that make my head go woo-woo? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, son, there's things called, what, what are drugs? Um, um, then Lenny stands up. He went to high school with us too. Um, Alex, I, I don't know how you've made it this far and you don't know what drugs are. They're, they're different chemicals or plants or whatever that are derived to, you know, inebriate your brain. Like, yeah, wh- but dad, I, I just want to do more Deemsters. Dad, I love Deemsters. I watched Joe Rogan. He's always doing Deemsters. He made fucking kind. I literally, I saw, I saw Rogan. I, I started the war on carbs, the war on sugar, and embrace more Deemsters. I do keto, and I smoke DMT four times a day now, and my life has never been better. Yeah, so that's yeah. how that goes. I miss those times. Me I want to go back. It was just simpler times. And then maybe those SRO officers were all on drugs, too. We well, never know. Well, that's the thing. You know, I mean, probably going backstage, just ripping out a little vial. Like, right. Fucking kids. Or just like, like when they were getting ready for like their test at the academy, they were just putting test 250 into their butt cheeks, just getting <laughs> absolutely yoked up and jacked. Yeah. And then just tearing ligaments 10 years later. <laughs> but that's oh, how it goes. God. We're riding at an hour six here. Yeah. Well, well hey. Let's, um, let's call it a crack. Let's plug it in. Hey, we folks. We do got some crazy plugs. We, we have some good plugs for you. Uh, first off and foremost. Uh, thank first you for and listening. Foremost, thank you for listening. You can catch it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, a- a- anything you want follow our you social media it. accounts yeah Instagram. good crack podcast on instagram uh good crack podcast on tiktok we're gonna start getting the tiktok going we just been trying to figure out the logistics of our everything producer joe has been taking some exterior shots that we'll use some fun right some funny clips and um and then last but not least if you are in the new york city area tomorrow specifically the west village me and matt will be uh performing stand-up at the bronx river yacht club it's not a it's, real yacht club. It's not. It's, it's, cool it's not like what it sounds like in uh, the village. It's yeah. right around the corner from Washington. It's Square on. Park. It's on Bleecker Street, right off of West Fourth Street. Joey and I have been really toying with the idea of getting into stand up for a while, and we've yep. just been looking for the push and trying to figure out how to get into the scene. And ironically, last weekend I was at a wedding and I met this delightful bartender. Yep. She was making me the craziest craft cocktails I've ever had in my life. They were fucking phenomenal. And, you know, she followed me on Instagram. I followed her on Instagram. She's like, you got to come check out some of the bars I bartend at. They're really fucking sick. And then she's like, I actually ho- host an open mic, too, on Mondays. I'm like, oh, that's fucking sick. Like, I should do that soon. And out of nowhere, she texts me this week and is like, hey, listen, you and your buddy are in. I'm like, uh, what do you mean? She's like, Monday night, 6 p.m., between 6 and 8, you're going to be doing open mic. 
Yeah. This girl does not know that me and Joey have never done stand up. Yeah. And we don't even know like if we're gonna be good. We don't even know. What no, we're we're, say. we're gonna be good. I think we're. we're gonna I feel like we're gonna be good. You know we're gonna be. Mean? We're gonna I'm, talk I'm about deemsters. We're gonna talk about deemsters and hallucinogenic peyote cactus. But yeah, I mean, listen, folks, it's hey. a f- free event. There's. They don't even have a drink minimum. Yeah. It is literally just walk in and enjoy. So if you are in the New York City metro area, you know Monday night between six and eight. Yeah, it starts at eight, I believe. I think it starts at six. Okay, we go on at eight. Something like that. I think I just remember seeing eight p.m. It's something like I think it, the open mic is between six and eight. Oh, okay, okay. And we'll be called that. Like me and you, you and I might be going up at seven thirty, or we might be going up at six fifteen. Hey, get there for six. It's gonna you be know, five if minutes. You get, if yeah. you're getting off of work, come get a drink, hang out. We'll bullshit. We'll shoot some crack, smoke some crack too. Smoke some crack. Smoke and then you, uh, you know we'll see how it goes. Um, I think we're gonna film it. Yeah, we're gonna. We'll film have it. somewhere there. We're to gonna film, film it. it. And hey, we're gonna play the it goal, next week on the, the show. The goal here is, if they're happy with what we do, they are gonna have us back as regulars. And then at that point, you know, that's when it begins, folks. And then SNL comes calling. Yep, yep. And we're me and Joe are gonna get our own sketch show called, "Hey, did you fuck my wife?" Part three. <laughs> it's gonna be called the Good Crack Boys and wife fucking. Hey, man. Dude, I'm just waiting until, like, this really blows up and we have, like, friends, like, 10 years from now that are, like, really big fans of us. Mm-hmm. And they come up to us in the street one day and they're like, what, what would they say? Well, be, like, that kid from, Well, like, no, that's why, was... yeah, yeah, we were saying, like, you, you hope that we get to a point one day where if we come back around, you see, you see those people. Like, I imagine I would come back and, like, I'd, I'd run into someone I know and they'd be like, wait, hold on a sec. Joey D? Hey, Joey, man, how you doing? Dude, it's, hey, it's me, Kevin, man. How the hell are you? Hey, Kev, how's it going, dude? Shit, man, it's been like 20 years. How, how's it? You, you're doing the movies now, right? You're doing, you're doing like the Hollywood, New York City thing. Yeah, you know, I'm trying, man. I've been doing stand-up. Yeah, stand-up, too. I've been watching you. You follow got, the pod. Yeah, the podcast, man. It's such good crack. Well, hey, listen, man. I, I don't know if you remember... But uh, back in seventh grade, it was a long time ago, but back in seventh grade, I used to tell you about my grandmother's uh, <laughs> secret, uh, you know, it's a secret stew recipe. You know, you always told me you love stew. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I vaguely remember you telling me about that. I, I do like stew, but I, 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 I vaguely remember you in middle school telling me that your grandma made this stew. Yeah, man, it's really good. I, you know, I still got the recipe. I've been doozing it all the time. But hey, listen, Joey, man, I don't. I don't know how long you're in town or anything, or if you got any crazy plans. I'm, you know, I know you're you're doing the movies now, so I'm sure your life is wild. But you know, hey man, if you if you got some extra time, I don't know this week or something. I would just get mean a I, lot to me. I would mean a lot to me if you just you know c- come over to my place and you know try the stew out. Ah, uh, hey, Kev, man. I mean, for, thank you, dude. Uh. You know, I, I, I'm only in town a few days. I, I got to get back to L.A. We got a whole, you know, slate of shows we're getting done. I, I got to see my mother. You we're know, doing, I'm seeing, you know, we're doing Hitman 3. It's I'm kind of, Marvel yeah, Guy. I'm kind of, dude, I'm just kind of here for a couple of days. I wanted to visit my mother. Then he pulls you, know? you in really close. And then he just pulls me in. He's like, Listen, man. I don't, I didn't want to say this, but hey, man, you get, it means so much. It, it means so much to me. And well. Every day, at around two p.m., late lunchtime, I, I've been putting a bowl of stew <laughs> out on my back porch. Oh, okay. And yeah, I don't know, man. You know, you get so close with people, and you start to love something so much that you'd never want to see it go away. And I, I, I leave this bowl of stew out because I, I hope that I don't know, man. Maybe I'm crazy, but I hope that maybe one day. Just one day, when I slide open that 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 screen door, I slide it open and I look outside and I I see you standing there. You know, just by surprise, I I slide the screen door open and you're sitting there just eat, sipping, eating the stew and slurping on it with a big old wooden spoon, like it's a giant bowl of Momo ramen, and you're just sitting there eating it. And I know I, you're a fan you of Momo because I'm you know I listen to the show. And and I sit there and I think. He's finally home. He made, he made he made it home, and I, I all I hope is that one day I open that door and you're standing there. That's all, man. And I, I I just really miss you. And, oh God. and then it's like, all right, well I gotta get I gotta go. It was great seeing you, dude.
That's our but ideal you, you scenario. Hope, you hope for that. You that's, hope for that's that. That's how one we day. hope it turns out. That you really someone do. Someone has been making stew for us for 20 years. <laughs> so we eat it. Yeah, but hey, once again, tomorrow night, 6 p.m., Bronx River Yacht Club in the West Village, right on Bleecker Street, right off of Washington Square Park. Come out, have a drink. And you know what? That's just like one off, but like, you know what? I think this is like the real start of it. And me and Joey are going to start doing spots whenever we could. And we're going to find places to do stand up. Absolutely. Especially when I'm done with this fucking Belmar experiment. And I don't have to go spend yeah. fucking $400 we're gonna, in DJs. We're going we're gonna to gonna be go. getting down next weekend. Oh, dude, yeah. Joey D making a live appearance. and So next weekend's plan for the pod is since it's Labor Day, I'm going to be in the Belmar house last weekend. Joey D is going to – I'm going to come back here. Mm-hmm. We're going to do the pod. We're going to shoot right back down the shore. We yep. might make some down the shore content. Belmar It's going to be a good time. We're going to be like, hey, this is fucking DJs, dude. The vaccine's for fucking pussies. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean vaccine? But, hey, thank you again for watching. Thank you for we'll listening. We'll see you next Sunday. Please and hey, tell your friends. Keep yeah, tell everyone. Going. We love tell it. everyone. It's going to be every Sunday, folks. Stay yep. consistent. With every this. Sunday, if you like doing, us. if you like doing stimulating drugs and crack, this is the place for you. Yep. And once again, to quote one of my favorite quotes: "Smoke them if you got them. Smoke them if you got them, folks. Good crack podcast. Take care."